talk about the environment and some of the factors that affect it. First off, let's start talking about biomes. So what is a biome? A biome is a type of environment. For instance, a desert. A desert is a biome because there are specific features that are common only to deserts. So a biome is a type of environment that has specific features common only to it. In a desert, for instance, you might find cacti. And then you have another biome, let's say the polar regions. So you have the uh, desert biome, you have the polar biome, and let's say you have the rainforest biome. The animals that you will find in one of these biomes is not going to be the same as the ones that you are going to find in another biome. Because animals adapt to biomes. So this is a game called One Hour One Life. The screenshot is from a game called One Hour One Life. And it's a great way of illustrating how biomes work. So here we can see the person is standing and they have to their south uh, an ice biome where you can find penguins. Uh, to the left they have a sort of mountain biome where they find tall fir trees. And then you have a grassland biome. Each of these different biomes has its own specific animals which have adapted to that biome. For instance, you won't find many frogs living in deserts because frogs re require a very humid climate. There are some, but not many, uh, because frogs require a humid climate. So they've adapted to more wet biomes like rainforests in the same way as you won't find many camels in rainforests for the same reasons. Okay. So now uh, we come to the next term, ecosystem. The word ecosystem is often confused with the word biome, but ecosystem is way more vaguely defined. An ecosystem is a community of habitats. So what does this mean? Let's start, start by explaining community. Community is basically all the animals that inhabit a particular ecosystem that basically interact with each other. So they often form food chains and food webs, which you can see here. So here we have uh, all these microscopic creatures and then these smaller fish and then these larger fish and then the sharks. These would all form a community of animals that live in the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. Uh, yeah. So these are all uh, collectively form a community because they interact with each other as in they eat each other. See, they often say interact to make it sound sciencey, but it's mostly just eating each other. Anyway, so uh, a community of animals does not uh, just l exist. They often need habitats to exist in. So a habitat and uh, is a place where the animal can sleep and eat and get rest and food and all those kind of things. It's basically similar to a biome. It's the house of the animal where it lives. So a community habitats form an ecosystem. So where all of these uh, different fish and microscopic animals and sharks live collectively forms an ecosystem, namely maybe the deep sea or a coral reef and stuff like that. But the thing about ecosystems is it is quite vague. So an ecosystem can be huge. Like you can think of the earth as a whole ecosystem because we're a community that's interacting with each other and uh, we all live. So we have habitats, a habitat, like for instance, for people is like houses and cities and for animals, it could be trees and forests. So together you could say that the earth is one ecosystem. But then again, you could also say that even a small log, which has uh, fungus growing inside it and insects eating that fungus and stuff like that. Uh, so a whole food chain going on. You could say a log is an ecosystem. So ecosystems are far more vaguely defined, whereas biomes are very much more specific. For instance, you couldn't say that a log is a biome or that earth is a biome. Earth is not a biome and a log is not a biome. A desert is a biome. A rainforest is a biome. A hill, a hilly area is a biome. Uh, and the food chain and the food web. Now, a lot of people, including me, 
had uh, questions like what's the difference between the food chain and the food web well here's a very good uh, chart that can help explain this so let's say you have a top predator like humans or in this case the large shark so shark eats a small shark the great white shark for instance eats a smaller shark which eats ocean sunfish and which eats all of these microscopic animals and then so this is a food chain because it's all steps building up to the largest predator so one by one by one by one but of course real life is much more complicated than that for instance these tiny microscopic dino flagellates over here uh, they won't just be eaten by copepods they will also be eaten by other things like shrimp and pteropods so all of these things interact with each other in the ecosystem all of these animals and organisms interact with each other in a variety of different ways so they form what is called a food web so a food chain is much simpler than a food web a food web uh, strives to include all of the correlation all of the connections and interactions basically all of the eating uh, done by all of the animals and organisms living inside an ecosystem whereas a food chain basically tells you how the food that you ate uh, where the food that you ate got its food from so let's say you ate a tuna sandwich so the tuna let's say ate a squid and the squid ate a lantern fish and the lantern fish ate a copepod and then that ate a uh, diatom which got its energy from the sun so that would be the food chain and you're at the top of the food chain but that's just only a slice of the true bigger picture now one more thing is that I would like to explain is that uh, biologists use different techniques in order to find uh, in order to study the environment for instance, they study several factors in an environment. Like for instance, in certain places, you might have a very high pH soil. And in those places, certain plants can grow and other plants don't grow as well. So these factors, or for instance, certain parts of the forest uh, could receive a lot of sunlight. For instance, where there are f very few trees and there's a lot of grass. Whereas other areas deep in the forest get less sunlight. So that could affect where the plants grow. So such kinds of factors like light or pH of the soil or rainwater, things that are not living but are still factors which influence where plants and animals live, it are called abiotic factors. And they uh, can be studied using pH probes or sunlight measuring devices, etc., etc. And these can often give us clues about why certain populations live in certain places. For instance, if an area with a lot of sunlight uh, has more, has less fungi than an area with less sunlight, then we could see that sunlight is a factor because uh, fungi prefer to live in damp habitats like uh, the inside forests you might often find in the cold damp parts uh, on the ground there's fungi growing up or from the tree stems this is because uh, there's less, little sunlight to dry the water so the fact that uh, there are abiotic factors can also be studied another thing that can be studied uh, is the population and this can be studied using what is known as quadrat sampling Basically, you divide the whole uh, biome or ecosystem into squares. Uh, and then you randomly choose certain squares where you want to go and study certain factors. It could be abiotic factors or it could be the population. And so this quadrat sampling is used by many researchers to this day. And it's a great way of determining without bias uh, the kind of makeup of an ecosystem, what kind of animals and plants, flora and fauna live within it. Last but not least, I come to how to use a microscope. This is a great website. Uh, I'll put the link in the description as well for how to use microscopes. 
One thing that must be understood is that there's not just one kind of microscope, but many kinds. There's compound microscopes and stereo microscopes. So you can look for which kind of microscope is, you would prefer and how to use it. Just check out this website. This was not sponsored. By Thank you for watching.